people, well, everybody here tonight. Get your Bibles out. We're going to open to the book of James. The book of James, chapter number two this evening. We're going to get the book now, so get your Bibles open. We're going to give you a Bible lesson here and take a few minutes, give you this truth here from the Word of God. Um, I don't, I didn't uh, preach this morning. I don't, I don't do that. What I did this morning, I do that one time a year, and that's at the camp meeting Sunday. And that's the first time I've sit in church and listen on Sunday morning and I'm in. And um, I don't, I don't preach. So uh, that was unusual for me to do that this morning, but I'm glad I did. And we had a great time. Rome, uh, Romans, I'll give you verses from there, but James chapter four, I want to start with tonight. And I want you to look at this. Everybody listen, pay attention. James four, verse 11. Speak not evil one of another. Brethren, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth him speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Tonight, on a sin that Almost all Christians in our churches are guilty of. Myself, you, all of us at one time or another. It is the sin of criticism. Having a critical spirit or being a critic. Tonight, we're going to look at sort of a yucky sort of a subject. Don't like to think about it? Sort of like snot on your arm. Uh, that's what this subject reminds, makes me think of. When I feel it, just something you'd rather not see or feel. Or, or, and the word criticize means to judge or to find fault with. There's always a Monday morning quarterback downtown at the at the at the local uh, barber shop who can tell you all the mistakes that the team made yesterday in the football game. The coach should have done this. The quarterback shouldn't have done that. They should have played so-and-so. They shouldn't have played. The world's full of people like that that can tell you everything wrong with any, anything anybody else is trying to do. Now, that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. And I want you all to listen, pay real close attention because it's a, it's a very serious subject in the Bible. I want to say first tonight, people are quick to criticize. It's, it's in our nature. Uh, we don't like to see other people doing or being or having something we should be doing, being or being. We, we don't like it. It makes us feel bad, so we point out faults in other people. Now, some people are just ab, just obsessed with it. You can tell a lot about a person by how they react to a certain subject. If I mention Peter, if I just said Peter tonight, you know what a lot of people would think? That sorry, good for nothing Peter. He cussed I cannot believe him. After all Jesus had done for him, he turned out there and cussed in front of that little girl at that restaurant when she brought his food to him, and he denied the Lord and said he didn't even know who Jesus was. I cannot, I, I just don't know about that guy. I mean, he cussed and denied the Lord after the Lord had blessed him. Here's what they don't tell you about Peter. I'm not justifying Peter's denial, but listen, Peter was the only disciple that ever walked on water. He took a step out and took some steps on water. I suggest until you've done that, you might ought to lay off of him just a little bit with your pharisaical snooty attitude and judging him. He healed lame men. His shadow could pass by people and heal them as he walked by. Also, uh, Peter was the man that God used on the day of Pentecost that preached a sermon that 3,000... Until you preach a sermon with 3,000 people getting saved, uh, maybe you ought to just hush uh, about Peter. Amen? You see how we are? We figure out something wrong in somebody's life and nail them to the wall with that and boy, forget about everything God's ever done right with them. Same way with all them guys. David. Uh, you mentioned David. Some, some people, uh, they look at... Oh, 
adulterer, murderer. I would walk across the street and read one of his psalms. I'm telling you, I ain't got a bit of confidence in him. I cannot believe him. I can't believe God didn't kill him and all that. I'm not taking up for what David did wrong. David did do wrong. David did wrong. But I'm going to tell you something else David did. David took that rock one day and under the power of the Holy Ghost, whenever the rest of that whole crowd was chicken to go fight, he stepped out there and smacked old Goliath right smack down between the eyeballs and knocked him down, took his own sword and cut his head off, and nobody else did that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's easy to find fault with some of Thomas, same way. Old Thomas, you know, you mentioned Thomas. Old Doubting Thomas. I cannot believe him. He doubted the Lord after all. You know, uh, old Thomas, he got straightened out, and then he was one of the twelve. I ain't none of us a member of the twelve. And old Thomas, uh, he was honest. He said, I got to see it first. And old Thomas got in there and he did get it right. Uh, people are quick to criticize. I've been around a long time now and I've been preaching. I've been preaching all over this country and other foreign countries for many, many years. And I noticed something back many years ago. I'd go into a small church and preach. And uh, when I say small, I'm talking about, you know, little bitty country churches. And, uh, I'd go in there and the people would get up and they would criticize. I've heard preachers get up in those little small churches and say, bless God, uh, these, these compromising uh, churches. Hey, no wonder they got a crowd uh, the way they, they, they won't preach. And, and, and the, the message was, if you preach hard and straight like me, you ain't going to have a big crowd of people and criticize big churches. And then the next week, I preach in a big church. And the big churches say, I'll tell you one thing, these little churches are a bunch of hypocrites. If they had anything to offer, people would come. And I thought, well, everybody's criticizing everybody. They're criticizing the little, little's criticizing the big, and the ones in between, and they're always finding, and they're always finding fault with uh, whoever else, their they're, they're, they're backslid calls are little, their backslid calls are big, and finding fault with everything. It's easy to criticize. It's easy to criticize. It requires no talent. You don't have to have any ability. Anybody can sit back and pick out fault with doing this or doing that. I, I like what Jack Howells told him that time. Uh, they come to him and they said, we don't like the way you're doing it. He said, well, I like the way we're doing it better than the way you're not doing it. Amen. I mean, you ain't killed no giants. Uh, you ain't walked on no water. Uh, uh, you, ain't, uh, you ain't raised no dead people, so I'd hush if I was you. I want to say second tonight, reasons people criticize. Ladies, listen to me. I, I, ain't, I ain't crazy. I know how ladies in church criticize other ladies. I know how men in churches criticize other men. In a lot of churches, there's pecking order and peer pressure. And the ladies, like you got some of what we call the, I don't know, what they call them the, the, main, the main gossips in the church. And they got a group of people around them. And if they decide they don't like somebody, they'll continually hit that person and talk about them until they get all their friends thinking like they think about that other lady, right? And the first thing you know, when that other lady's name is mentioned, half the ladies in the church have a, have a disdain and a bad taste in their mouth. Well, we don't like her. We don't like her. And it's even so bad. You talk about peer pressure. It's even so bad that if one of the group is friends with that lady, they'll punish her for being friendly to the lady that they all don't like. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You couldn't get more full of the devil if you sold meth and was a whore on Friday night. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you hear me this evening? That's as wicked as division. You know, that's one of these six things that the Lord hate. I mean, a prostitute wasn't one of them. It was he that soweth discord among the brethren. I'd rather be a drug dealer to judgment than somebody that caused trouble in God's house and tore up the body of Christ and caused trouble in the house of the Lord. Lord, I didn't plan on saying all that, but it's done out there now. It's on the internet. Ain't nothing I can do about it. I don't tell you, look, buddy, you know why people criticize? I'll tell you why people criticize. Nine times out of ten, they're jealous. I'll tell you how to escape criticism. I'll get more to that in a minute. Uh, if, if they're jealous of you. Here's the way... Here's a way to escape criticism. Say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. 
Say nothing, do nothing, be nothing, and nobody will say a word to you. Say something, do something, be something, and you're going to catch it. And you're going to catch it from all the other people that's jealous because you're doing something they ain't got the guts or the dedication to do. I don't know, Jimmy Robbins, he pastor down there at Mountain View Baptist Church in Calpin, South Carolina. He's a character. I don't know if any of y'all remember Brother Robin. He was absolutely a character. I, I loved him. I thought the world of him. He was a great preacher, and a lot of people hated him. Uh, but I tell you what, that, that fella, he called me up one day, been 20 years ago. He said, Dr. Castle, that's what he called me, Dr. Castle. That's what he, said. he said, Dr. Castle, uh, he said, uh, they're kicking you down here, down in South Carolina. He said, they're kicking you down here. They're kicking you. He said, but I didn't hear you on the radio. He said, you're doing more for God than them. It's a kicking you. You just keep on going. Now, he told them, they tell you this. If somebody's a kicking you, they got to be behind you, right? If they're kicking you out here, they're behind you. And they're, that's what they don't like. That's what they don't like. And I'm going to tell you tonight, the reason people criticize is, junk. I mean, a real pretty lady comes in the church and somebody says, I don't like her. Never spoke to her. Some old ugly woman come in. Oh, she's so sweet. Bless her heart. Uh, I don't know what that says about some of you that everybody likes. Uh, I'm just kidding with you. Uh, but I'm telling you, that's the reason people criticize. People, listen, people think they, they make themselves look big by making other people look small. That's the truth. That's the truth of man. You can always tell a failure by the way they criticize success. Amen. Uh, they said, uh, they, uh, said uh, people, uh, there are people who will not, I've, I've noticed over the years, there are people that won't let their kids come to our church. They will not let them come here to church, but let them go to the movies. Christian people. Christian people will let kids go to the movies on Saturday night where there's cussing and people taking their clothes off and taking God's name in vain, but will not let them come to this church. Something bad wrong with a Christian that thinks like that. Man, must be under conviction or something. I, it requires no talent. I know Billy Kelly, he said, uh, he been on preacher. I don't know if y'all, some of y'all remember Billy Kelly, and you should look him up and listen to him preach. Great preacher and great big guy. And he preached all over the country for 40 years before the Lord took him home. And uh, he drove a Cadillac. He drove a Cadillac. And when he'd wear that and out, he'd get him another Cadillac. Oh, people criticized him. I've always thought it was funny. You could, a preacher can drive a $10,000 Cadillac, and they'll talk about him like he's a dog. I mean, have a, he can have a $20,000 Nissan, and nobody says a word. Uh, there's just some that preacher, bless God, worldly. Uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's concerned about the world. He's, he's worldly. And Billy Kelly's, he's this big around, y'all. I mean, man, had to have a big, had to have a big house sitting like that. He said, if you lived in a car as much as I lived, you'd have one too. It's easy to criticize somebody when you don't drive 10 miles worth. Well, when you drive to Florida and, and to California and to Texas, and some preachers wouldn't fly, a lot of them. And, you know, he said one time, uh, he said uh, he said uh, he liked to go bear hunt. Oh, Billy and a lot of preachers play golf, play fishing. And he said, I preach 50 weeks a year, 50 revivals. And I go bear hunting two weeks a year, and they call me a hypocrite. Ain't that something? Yeah, ain't that something? You know what people used to say about me? They say it's gone too much. Preach. And but then if you don't, they say, well, our preacher must not be no good. Ain't nobody ever asked him to come preach revival. And no matter what you do, somebody got something to say about it. I, I, you, ought to preach, you ought to be glad you got a preacher somebody else might want to hear once in a while. Lord in mercy, y'all. Uh, uh, I've, I've got people, I've had it for years, people push you. People push you. They want you to preach on this. I have people that want me to preach on marriage all the time, and for good reason. And you should. A preacher should. I'm not disagreeing with that at all. God knows we need it every week. But then I've got people who want me to preach on young people. And these teenagers, why don't you preach more on young people? Why don't you preach more on prophecy? Why don't you preach more on this? Why don't you preach more on that? Why don't you preach more? Well, you know, I mean, it's impossible. Here's what you got to do. You got to get with God. You got to spread the table and have it ready for the saints of God to eat and say, come and dine and just trust God to give us what we need, and your need will be met. It'll come, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's easy to say, well, I think that he should have done this, and I think 
that he, and what do you think about that? And what do you think about that? And I think it should be this way. I don't know why he won't say more about. I don't know why he won't. Uh, it's easy to sit back and criticize. Amen. Man, that street preaching like we've done, Lord. You talk about bringing the criticism. And it's from lost people too. Very seldom from, from, I mean, not from lost people. It's from saved people. Very seldom does a lost person criticize street preaching. It's always these professing Christians. We had a lady, we was preaching at the flea market one day, and a bunch of young preachers out there, I mean, we are screaming and hollering and preaching, and this scantily clad female, that means a woman with hardly no clothes on, uh, come up and said, I just don't agree with what you people are doing. This is not modest. And I was young. I wasn't as cultured and refined and polished as I am now. I said, Lord, I'd hate to hurt you then. But I said, ma'am, you're the one who don't know what modest mean. She went, Lord, if it looks could have killed, she'd have murdered me right there. And I just turned around and walked off. I hope the Lord gouged her with that. Uh, that ain't got nothing to do with being modest. You crazy? It's easy. Look, look. It's easy to stand up in the bleachers. Or it's especially easy to sit in your in your lazy boy recliner at home where the cameras are 50 yards above the field and look down there and say, there he is, stupid. Throw it to him. He's wide open. What's wrong with you? How easy that is. Let's put you down there on that field. Here you are. Here you are now. You got about, you got maybe, what, two seconds to decide. Sometimes not even that long. And you, that guy hacks that ball, and here you are. And you got about four big goons, about as big as a refrigerator, coming right at you. You couldn't see it. You'd have to get a step ladder. To, you can't even see that guy down yonder. I'm saying it's a lot different when you're out there on the field. The basketball, I mean, you know, I play, I play basketball. And you watch them at home, the cameras are always, I think I always wanted to put the cameras down. Put it down here to level. I want to see how high they jump. I want to see how they go up over the rim. You can't watch it up there like that. You get a false uh, uh, picture of, of the game. Let's put you down there in that thing, buddy. Now, that's how these guys come up here, and there goes somebody down, and you got one half a second to make up your mind. They're talking about that race. You know, Dax, he's in, I don't know where, California or somewhere or on the way, uh, right now. And uh, they can you imagine you're out there on this motorcycle and they're jumping like this, and you got, 10 over here and 10 over here and 20 here and 20 here. And you, you're hitting ruts and mud and sliding sideways. Lord, I don't, I don't, ain't my sport, buddy. I'll tell you one thing. It's easy to sit in the stand and criticize. And the same's true at church. It looks so different from up here looking back there than it does from there looking up here. I had the rare occasion this morning to sit over there with my girls and I thought, Lord have mercy, don't it? Look, I can't imagine just sitting there like that every Sunday. Lord have mercy. How what it felt like it felt like I was on vacation. It felt like so just a light. It felt so light. I feel like every time I come to church, I've got this thing right here on my chest. That's what it feels like. Somebody's upset about this. Somebody's mad about that. Where's so-and-so? Uh, so-and-so's quit. Somebody else is mad. Somebody else is mad because somebody else ain't mad. Somebody's mad because somebody else is mad because somebody else ain't mad because somebody's mad because somebody else ain't mad. It just, it's just a constant thing. I'm telling you, brother, you never meet a critic. You listen to me. You never meet a critic of the church who's trying to make it better. You never meet a critic who's trying to help the church. It's always somebody ain't doing nothing. People doing something ain't critics. Uh, if you want to make me aggravated, which is Greek for mad, come in here and start criticizing these bus kids or these bus workers. Oh, my goodness. I can feel it in my feet, buddy. It starts coming up. Coming up, coming up. Okay. But anything I can't stand, it's people coming up and say, why don't these bus workers make... Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my. I, there, there's a group called, there's this outfit called the Recovering Fundamentalist. Y'all heard about them? And I don't know them guys. I ain't got nothing against them. Uh, their, their whole thing is, these stupid, ridiculous Baptists that's got all these convictions and belief. We'll show you how wrong and dumb they are. That's their ministry. That's their ministry. 
I'd be ashamed to say that my ministry was talking about Baptist churches that's trying to do something for God. If you ain't got no ministry, no better than that. You know what them recovering fundamentalists, I hope somebody sends this to them. You know what they need to do? They need to start a bus route. Get out on Saturday and visit six hours and knock on doors and pray that God will get a hold of them, them kids and save their soul. It's easy if you just sit behind a little microphone and say, well, I don't think they should do this. And their ridiculous convictions and their dresses have to be down to here and everything's a sin. Well, quit whining, you big baby, and get out there and do something for God. If they're so terrible, get out and build a good church and win souls for Jesus Christ. And all God people said, that's right. Easy, so easy, so easy. So this owl, this guy one time, they had this owl at the store and it's on a fence post. He perched there and he, he looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and said, I'd buy that thing if it looked more real. I could take it home and put it on my, scare the crows away and stuff. It just ain't made, the eyes ain't right, the feet ain't right. About that time it moved. That's the way some of them critics are. They find something wrong with the real thing. I heard about a preacher who had a what he called the book of complaints. Forty years, he kept a book of complaints. And he had this book, and he, he, he advertised it. Told church member, he said, uh, when somebody comes to his office with a complaint about another member, he'll say, all right, we're going to write that complaint down. Are you willing to sign it? He said, well, when I address this at our next meeting, I want, are, are, you willing to, are you willing to sign this complaint that you have about one of the other people in the church? He said he had that 40 years and never had one person sign it. That means it's so easy to criticize and be a big chicken and not even stand up for it. It's like somebody write a letter and won't sign it. Anybody writes me a letter and won't sign it, I just tear it up without even reading it. You ain't got enough guts to put your name on what you write, all you people listening out there in Radio Land. <laughs> if you ain't got enough guts to put your name on and say, I wrote this, you ain't got no business writing nobody no letter. I'm not going to tell you who I am. Well, huh, hang up, bam, click. You don't deserve to be listened to. If you ain't got the guts to tell who you are, shut up. Shut up is a Greek word that means H-U-S-H. Amen. One man said at a hotel one time, he said, uh, they said, how'd you learn how to run a hotel? He said, you don't have to know anything to run a hotel. All you got to do is buy one, open it up. The customers will tell you how to run it. I said, that's the way it is at church. You don't have to know how to pastor church. Just start one. People will tell you what you ought to do. They're, they're all ready for all this advice. All, everybody's got their advice. Everybody got advice about, I don't people once in a while I say, oh, you preachers got it made. Don't work but one day a week. Uh, uh, I said, well, if it's that easy, why don't you start you one, big boy? If there's all this money in it, amen. I bet I'm not, I'm not fussing. I thank God for what I've got. That people try to, that church tried to give me raises. I turn them down. True, true. I'm not, I'm not preaching for money. I'm preaching for the Lord. I was preaching for the Lord before y'all come along. And I will, I may wind up back on the street full time before it's over with. I don't preach for money. And I sure don't preach for a paycheck. I don't do it. Thank God for our church takes care of me, but I keep it modest and we keep it down and people can't believe it. Well, they find out I make $500 a week. What do some of you guys make? And I ain't fussing things. I mean, I have benefits and stuff, and I get help from here and yonder and thither and yon and all that. I'm not hurting. I'm not starving. But you always got somebody. <laughs> Where's them big, nice suits that come from Burlington Coat Factory, brother? I know how to get them. That now is about 60 bucks. I just know how to do it. I know how. I can, I can look like a rich man without being one. <laughs> uh, listen, people who criticize. Always some, look people, blowing out the other man's candle ain't going to make your shine no brighter. All right, last thing I'll say and I'm through. Number four, how to handle criticism. Here's how you handle your critics. Got them. If you say something, do something, be something. Don't, 
Don't criticize a man before you've been in his shoes. Before I ever pastored a church, I had a lot to say about my former, my first pastor when I was a young preacher. I criticized him for doing, allowing the young people to do this or do it. And you know what? When I found out, when I pastored a church and I come to them same crossroads, I done the very same thing that I criticized that man for. Very same thing. You just don't, didn't understand. Abraham Lincoln said, if I read, let alone answered, all the criticism letters sent to me, this office would be closed for any other business. He said, if all I did was answer my critics, we wouldn't be able to do nothing else. You don't have to explain every move you make to everybody. Let them, people all the time, they said, Danny, how do you handle uh, preachers who talk bad about you? I outrun them. That's all you, do, all you can do. I'm not going to stop and argue with them. So I'm running in my lane. He's running here. It's supposed to be. I'm running my lane. I'm doing something for God. This guy's doing something for God. I'm running my lane. He's running his. I ain't got time to stop and say, I don't like your tennis shoes. I don't like you. You stepped out of your I don't have time for that. People who criticize ain't doing nothing. Man, it's running. I ain't worried about who's, who's fell and who, who's up and who's down and who's ahead. Who's behind. I've got a race that I'm running. I've got my course in this race. I got a little... Uh, Little dog down road in Hoppy Tom. I've told you about him before. I, I guess he's still alive. I ain't seen him lately. I go running down through there. I'll go, well, tomorrow morning I'll run the gym, Lord willing, but Tuesday I'll run out on down Hoppy Tom. And I'm running down the road like this. And he comes out, he comes out like this. And he's, I hear something go, <laughs> so he did, just like, and I can tell he, it's a chihuahua. Chihuahuas are, they all look like they're demon possessed. Don't they really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> it is not fit they should live. Really, honest to goodness, y'all. The world's a purpose of something like that, being in the world. But anyway, that thing comes out there and you think he's going to tire my leg off, preacher. He, come, he comes after me. I don't stop and say, Please don't bite me. Look, can we talk? You know what I do, that stupid thing? Just ignore it, just run. He tries to catch my heels. Once in a while, he try to, and I just go, pow. <laughs> he goes, take off back down. That reminds me of preachers. That reminds me of preachers. They'll get behind me. They'll say, he's this, he's this, he's this, he's that. I don't like this. Like. And I'll say, how you doing, brother? Oh, hey, Brother Castle. How's your work doing? <laughs> I hate your guts. I hope you die. That's what they're thinking. Don't pay no attention to people like that. You'll never do nothing if you sit around and worry about everybody talking about you. Say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. They ain't going to say a word. That's right. The moon wouldn't shine if it paid attention to all the dogs barking at it all the time. Right? Chill out, y'all. The way to diffuse critics is just chill. Be yourself. An ambassador said he was on, on, on a foreign field and boy, they was giving him down the road, calling him everything in the book, talking bad about him and everything. And they said, don't it bother you that people hate you like that? And he said, nope, not a bit. He said, what bothers me is when they think bad of the nation that I represent. He said, it don't matter what they think about me. I want to think good of the nation that I represent. Amen. People, we ought not as well say, it don't matter what they think about me. What do they think about Jesus and the church and the Lord and the Bible? Now, here we go. I'm going to close. Here's how you handle criticism. Our reaction is what's important. My pastor said, you are not responsible, Brother Ed said, you are not responsible for people's acts. Uh, action, you're responsible for your reaction. Don't ever forget that. That's one of the most important lessons of the Christian life that's not scripture. You're not responsible for other people's actions. You're responsible for your reaction. I mean, you can't help what other people do, but you can help how you react about it. Here's how you do it. I'll say these three things and I'm hushing. 
Number one, don't fight back. When you hear somebody say something, say, well, I'll tell you one thing, what about them? That you're just as bad as they are. Don't fight back. That's what the Lord did. He opened not his mouth. That's right. Don't fight back. Don't retaliate. Don't say, well, so what? She does this. She does that. Uh, they said one time, somebody come up, and Michelangelo made a, a big old thing, them sculptures he made, and a guy come up and said, that arm on that thing just don't look right. It just don't look right. Something's wrong about the shape of it. Michelangelo takes a handful of dust and his hammer and goes, dink, dink, don't even hit it, and drops that handful of dust. And the guy says, much better, much better. That's why you handle criticism. Let the idiot think they're right. If you, if you have, man, the lady pulled a car in her garage said, something wrong with my car, making a noise. And the mechanic, obviously, he, wasn't, he, he went around and hit it with a hammer, tink, 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 closed the hammer. Now try it. Oh, that's much better. Thank you very much. That's the way it goes sometimes. People just want to find something to fuss about and complain about. They'll make up something. Look here. One of the surest marks of a good character is the ability to accept criticism without having malice and hard feelings toward the one that gives it. One of the best marks of a real Christian is accepting criticism without feeling hard feelings uh, to them. Now, the way you know you shouldn't say something about somebody, there is such a thing as constructive criticism. I, I got that. And the Bible says, faithful the wounds of a friend, kiss of an enemy or cease. I got, I got all that. That's, that's a different side of this doctrine. Sometimes criticism is justified. Sometimes criticism is welcome. Sometimes you, like people else, say, what do you think about this? How, how do you feel? And it's okay for us to do constructive criticism. But if you get any pleasure out of finding something wrong, fault with somebody, you, you're wrong. It shouldn't make us feel good. Whew. Lord, it's quieter in Turkey Farmyard on Thanksgiving Day in here. <laughs> you shouldn't feel good when you talk about somebody and criticize them. So don't retaliate. If you're too immature to take criticism, you're not mature enough to take praise. Amen? Your reaction, the skunk would be extinct if it paid attention to criticism. Nobody ever says nothing good about skunks. Nobody's a cute little skunk. No, no, nobody. All it gets is criticism. But he just keeps on going. This is important. Number two, how to handle criticism. You check and see if it's deserved. Sometimes they might be right. Have you ever been, everybody said something critical about you and you get mad and you go home and you think, well, you know, that's the truth. Sure, I have lots of times. You check and see if it's the truth. God might be trying to show you something. Be man enough to admit it. Be woman enough to admit it. Say, well, and I wish she'd never said that, but honest to goodness, she is right. Maybe I need to work on this. Amen. Check to see. Never, listen, never fear criticism when you're right and never fear it when you're wrong. Never fear criticism when you're right. Never fear it when you're wrong. Never ignore it when you're wrong. If it's false, forget it. If it's ignorant, smile. If it's justified, learn from it. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. 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 Old Jack Hiles told a story one time. Come on, Miss Desi. Play a little bit. Old Jack Hiles told a story one time. He said he's out visiting, knocking on doors. He said this woman come to the door. He said, hi, ma'am. I'm Jack Hiles, pastor of First Baptist Church of over here in Hammond, Indiana. She said, oh, I've heard about you. He said, yeah. She said, yes, I have. I've heard about all the, I've heard about you. He said, ma'am, it's worse than you've heard. <laughs> he, said, he said, if you'll let me in, I'll tell you worse stuff than what you've heard. She said, come on in. He went in and wanted to the Lord. That's where you handle it.
That's the way to handle it. The truth is, we're not that important. We really ain't. We really ain't. We're not, we're not near as big a shot as we think we are. <laughs> big shots, a little shot, ought to be shot. That's right. So, maybe you got somebody at work and you just can't stand them because they said something bad. Maybe some lady in the church has told you that some other lady, and oh, you just, uh, you just want to pull her hair out. Wasn't for the grace of God, you know, and all that. Uh, maybe you need to not take yourself so seriously. Me too, all of us. We're not that big. We're not that important. Let's let God work on us this week. Let's, let's stand. You'd like to meet me around here and pray. I know you're probably embarrassed to come to the altar, but if you want to, come on. If you don't, you stay there and pray. Let's ask the Lord to help us. Lord, forgive me for having a critical spirit. Help me not to criticize people because I'm jealous of them. Help me not to criticize my neighbor because they got a nicer car or a nicer house or they've done something that I didn't get to do. Lord, forgive us for that. Help us not to have that attitude. I pray, Father, that you'd help us to have the right attitude when people criticize us. Help us not to get some kind of martyr complex here at Shining Light Baptist Church. Lord, we probably deserve half of what we get in criticism. And Lord, you've been good to us. And I pray that you'd give us grace to carry on in these dark days and difficult times. I pray that you bless every single person here tonight. Do what ought to be done in every life. We'll thank you for it. Help us to deal with these sins like this, sins of the flesh and the spirit, and put them away. Live right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All hearts clear. Anybody want to say something right quick? Did y'all find out about uh, Danny? Y'all pray for him. Amen. All right. All hearts clear. Amen, brother. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? All right. Everybody safe, sanctified, feel the Holy Ghost. Shouting ground here. Independent, fundamental, premillennial, desert on hell. Everybody ready to go? <laughs> Amen. All right. Now, we'll meet Wednesday night. Come praying. Next Sunday night is our study on the giants. It ain't going to be like this. It's going to be some heavy stuff. We're going to set the table next Sunday night and bring all your friends, especially the kids. The kids will love, love it. I'm, we're, You know, they, they something to all that Jack and the Beanstalk, Hercules, all that stuff. That's right, buddy. They something to all that folklore when, when, when hundreds of civilizations around the world tell the same stories, it all ain't false. It all ain't false. I'm talking big, big men. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones and make my bread. That's what them dudes would do, buddy. They'd take you up and break you in two. They'd take old Muhammad Ali and knock him down like that, knock him across the room. Uh, so don't miss that next Sunday night. All right, all hearts clear. We're going to be dismissed in prayer. Be sure and speak to Brother Dan here tonight. Let's um, I'm just do this this morning. I think we ought to have a quick business meeting and take uh, Brother Dan on his support on a monthly basis, one of our missionaries. So all in favor of that, let me know enough lifted hand. All right, done. Uh, well, I felt like that this morning. I'm sure some of you did too. So we're going to help him out as long as he's doing what he's doing, until God puts him doing something else or whatever. We'll talk about that. But we want to have him out on a monthly basis, and you you be good to him. Amen. All right. All right. All hearts clear. Don't forget, Saturday night's our business meeting. Uh, so come. It's not going to last long. All members of church, be here. Uh, God bless you. I might seem like I'm forgetting something, but I don't know. I don't, I don't write my announcements down. I just get up here and wing it. Once in about... Two or three years, I'll write some announcements down. But um, uh, I hope I haven't forgotten nobody. Let's let's uh, be dismissed in prayer. And after this, fellowship with each other. And be friendly in the Lord. And uh, God will bless you for it, okay? All right, Mr. Fletcher, go ahead.